Hey guys, I'm Layla. Welcome to Raid Lore Stories. Today's lore story is going to be for the first mythic champ added to the game, Sig from the Nephilim. And check this out. Check out that transformation animation. Isn't that cool? I, I want this guy. This reminds me of something from like Diablo, right? So we are going to read his lore story. It's brand new. I hope you guys enjoy. Sig from the Nephilim is an aberration, a fusion of opposites, part demon spawn, part lightbringer. Demon spawn and lightbringers are seen in Teleria are mortal bodies inhabited by exemplary beings who are able to bypass the ancient banishment spell that excludes the gods and the firstborn from the mortal world. But if such second order manifestations of light and darkness can exist upon Teleria, could they be merged in a second order union? This radical concept was the goal of a certain cabal of sorcerers and theologians who were active during the intellectual and social upheavals of the great schism of the Lumean Church and the fall of Narbuk. They were called Nephilim for their belief in what they called a Nephilim, a fusion of demon spawn and a lightbringer, which they conjectured would result in a superior being of incalculable power and sagacity. Even other revolutionary thinkers called their ideas mad, but the Nephilim were capable and determined and funded by wealthy obsessives. After much preparation, they achieved something remarkable in its own right. They stalked and bound a powerful demon spawn whose name has been lost to time. With rare magics and ancient relics, the Nephilim numbed the connection between the demon spawn's body and soul and bound him in ruined silver chains. The Nephilim built a tower to contain their prize and reinforce its magical bindings on a secluded hummock in the dusk hills from where dread Erath was just visible on the horizon. After more preparations and inscrutable rituals, the Nephilim began the second phase of their magnum opus, the attempted infusion of a Lightbringer soul. How they would shackle a Lightbringer and somehow force him to cohabitate the demon spawn's form was the greatest and most closely guarded secret of their sect. It, along with each and every participant in the final ritual, perished at the moment of Sigfrun's fusion. The very concept of creating a Nephilim was purged vilely from Telerian history by its own realization. The middlemen who supplied the Nephilim with provisions eventually came with a shipment and found the tower obliterated, with only the ground floor still partially standing. These porters fled in terror, and that, as far as the world could reckon, was the end of the Nephilim and their mad scheme. But for Sig from the Nephilim, the tower's destruction was only the explosive beginning of a secret, tortured existence. Sigfrid emerged from the rubble of his creation as a cosmological paradox, a spiritual abomination, two souls, two bodies, overlapping and coexisting in the self-same pocket of time and space. Neither Sigfrid, the demon spawn, nor the unknown Lightbringer were coherent personalities remaining within the Nephilim, but their powerful light and darkness energy remained raging within him along with their scrambled souls, constantly superseding and overriding each other in a chaotic equilibrium. Sigfrun vanished from the ruined tower into the trackless Kraken Desert. There, he found the mouth of an ancient underground tomb and retreated within, not from the baking sun, but from a reflexive need to isolate and hide from the world. Sigfrun knew that he should not exist, and both wished to undo himself, but also feared what might happen if he did. His young, fractured, incoherent mind identified with what he found in the crypt, a grave marked with the name Sigfrund, at which bones rested within antique armor, a broken sword and shield laying upon the breast. Sigfrund removed the bones, donned the armor, and took up the same pose, becoming dead to the world, yet still alive. For centuries, he lay in the tomb undisturbed, contemplating his own existence, his form intermingling with the plate he wore, so that it became him. In this long isolation, Sigfrun was able to better integrate his demon spawn and Lightbringer halves, though only in the realm of his thoughts. He dared not awaken himself, but only prepared for it in deathly meditation. He would keep his Lightbringer nature largely in control, for control was the nature of light, nor did he dare risk allowing the creative and freedom-loving darkness within him to become too dominant. But he also knew he should not extinguish either, for the just thought was the essence of Teleria, and he was of Teleria. Sigfrun was finally discovered by a wrathy ghoul thralls, and soon afterwards a host of fascinating necromancers arrived. They wished to perform grisly experimentations upon Sigfrun, but unbeknownst to them, he was listening to their discussion and decided that the time had come to test his control of his hybrid self.
When he rose from the sepulchre, the necromancers were terrified, for they held some inkling as to Sigrun's true nature and the power he could wield. They and their ghouls assaulted him forthwith, and he fought back. To his surprise, his demon spawn half was dormant as he cleft ghouls in twain with his sword and splattered necromancer brains against the dusty walls with a stroke from his huge shield. The righteous sphere of the Lightbringer within shone bright, and perhaps it had been partially ferocious crusader. The last necromancer begged for mercy, but a moment too late, as Sigfrun swung his heavy blade into the necromancer's torso. Hearing the plea, Sigfrun was strung by mournfulness and confusion. The will to learn and grow and change is the essence of darkness, and Sigfrun saw the death of the apparently repentant necromancer as an affront to this desire. His stern and motionless Lightbringer half retreated, and Sigfrun changed and warped, sprouting great wings and glowing with a magnetic fire of darkness that represented primordial regeneration. Even his garb shifted to reflect this altered balance, and his sword was spontaneously reforged. Doing what came naturally to him, like an amnesiac recovering lost memories, Sigfrun knit the sorcerer's flesh back together and anchored the sorcerer's swiftly departing soul to it. Restored to life, the necromancer tutored Sigfrun on Teleria and its history. At last, Sigfrun began to gain a dim but growing awareness of what he truly was, and to wonder for the first time if he could have a place in the world. Wow, I gotta say, that is a really, really well thought out story. And I really like how they they add and play in both of his forms. Because that last part there where they talk about him piecing back together the necromancer, he literally has a revive. So what will happen is when he transforms into this winged part, decreased damage taken from skills, but he also revives allies as well too, which is really, really cool. So guys, drop us some comments down below what you think for the lore story for our newest champ added in, the first mythic champ added in for Sigfrun the Nephilim, and thanks so much for watching.